So for this trick, we can have the spectator take the deck and give it a nice shuffle so that all the cards get extremely mixed up, just like this. And you guys can see here, all the cards are different and completely shuffled, all right? So at this point, I'm actually going to take the deck back from the spectator, and I'm going to be going through it to myself, and I'm going to be making some predictions. So I'm just going to go with this one over here. I have a strong feeling this one's going to work. Um, okay, so for my next one, I'm going to go with... Let's see. Yes, this one over here. All right, I'll go with this one. And for my last one, ooh, okay, I like this one a lot. So these are going to be my three predictions. So at this point, um, I can actually have the spectator um, tell me when to stop at roughly a third of the card. So let's say there, and then tell me when to stop again, roughly half. So let's say there, and then we'll just set this last one down. So now we have three roughly equal piles next to my three predictions. So at this point, actually, I can actually show you what the predictions are. So we have the nine of clubs, the jack of clubs, and the Queen of Hearts. So what we're going to be doing in this trick is we're going to be placing each of these predictions inside of these piles um, anywhere you want. But basically, before we do that, I want to make sure that the deck is really shuffled. So I would actually give this pile to the spectator. They can go ahead and mix it up and then take it back, and maybe they can shuffle this one if they want. It really doesn't matter. And then maybe they can shuffle this one as well. It really doesn't matter. It's all up to the spectator. So at this point, we've shuffled every single pile. Now the, the deck is completely mixed up. And at this point, I'm going to give the spectator the instructions of how to do the next part. So basically, I'm going to be taking the piles and dealing cards down one at a time, just like this. And whenever the spectator wants, they could call out stop. Um, and then I would take the card, my prediction, face up and just place it exactly where they said stop. Um, and that's basically what's going to happen for each of these uh, predictions here. So I would ask the spectator, which one do you want to start with? Let's say they want to start with the Queen of Hearts. So I say perfect. So like I said, I'm going to deal down the cards. You could say stop wherever you want. Let's say they say stop right over there. So we'll take the card, put it in just like this face up so you can see where it is. Uh, the Jack next. Okay, perfect. So we can have you say stop. Let's say stop over there. So we'll take it, put it in just like this, square it up. And last but not least, the Nine of Clubs. So just like before, stop right over there. Okay, perfect. Um, so we can put it in just like this. And now we have three predictions lost in the deck. So let's recap. Um, I chose three predictions at the beginning, and then you were able to uh, shuffle the cards. Wait, what were the predictions? It was the, oh yeah, nine of clubs. Um, and then, yeah, jack of clubs and queen of hearts. Okay, so basically I chose the predictions, and then we lost them in the deck. And then I had you shuffle each of the piles, so all the cards were even more shuffled than before. Um, and then I had you say stop wherever you wanted. You could have gone one more, one less, but you stopped at these three exact locations. And I'm not really sure why, but for some reason I had a really strong feeling that these predictions would end up correct. And uh, there's the proof right over there. The perfect matches. So guys, that is the trick, and now for the tutorial. Alright guys, so here's the tutorial for the trick that you just saw. So for this trick, all you're going to need is a normal deck of 52 cards. That is one thing. You want to make sure you have every single card in the deck. That is just a good thing to have. But yeah, this trick is completely impromptu. You can have the spectator shuffle the cards before you start the trick. And basically what's going to happen first is you're going to be taking the cards to yourself. So the spectator is not going to be able to see what's happening. They're only going to see this, okay? You're going to be pulling out the three predictions. The first prediction is going to be the soulmate of the fifth card, okay? So you see the fifth card, you see one, two, three, four, five, jack of clubs, okay? I'm gonna go find the soulmate of that fifth card, the jack of spades. This is gonna be my first prediction, and I'm gonna set it down to my left. So for my second prediction, I'm gonna pull out the soulmate to the top card, the two of hearts. Okay, perfect, so I'm gonna go through the deck, find that two of hearts, okay, here, or two of diamonds, sorry, here it is, and then that will be my second prediction. My third prediction is gonna be the soulmate of this bottom card right over here, the ace of spades. So that would be the ace of clubs. So I'm gonna go through, find the ace of clubs, and that will be my third prediction. So there it is, and I'm gonna set that down as my third prediction. So one more time to recap. The first prediction is the fifth card, jack of clubs, jack of spades. The second prediction is the soulmate of the top card, two of hearts, two of diamonds, and then the last one is the soulmate to the bottom card. So those are gonna be your three predictions. Flip the deck back over just like this, and now you can have the spectator just tell you when to stop at roughly a third of the card, so let's say there. Um, and then another third there, and then the last third here. Uh, just make sure the same order you put the predictions down from left to right, you also put the order of the piles down. Like starting from the top, you put down on the left first, and then the middle goes here, the bottom pile goes to the right. And if you want to check that you did this right, 
um, you should have the ace of spades lined up with your prediction over here. So that is exactly what you want. So at this point, you're going to flip over your predictions. You're going to show the spectator the predictions that you pulled out from the beginning, the jack of spades, two of diamonds, and the ace of clubs. And now you're going to remind the spectator that we really need to have a shuffled deck. So what you're going to do is you're going to hand them the middle pile, okay? So the middle pile here actually consists of all random cards. The only cards that you need to keep track of are in the top and bottom. So if you actually give the spectator the middle pile to shuffle, they can shuffle this pile as much as they want and it will have no impact on the end result of the trick. So they're going to mix up this pile and what you're going to do is while they're mixing up this pile you're going to pick up the first pile or the pile to the left and you're just going to shuffle the bottom few cards. You're not going to want to disturb the top five cards because the top five cards over here consist of your you know two soulmates that you really need to keep in order. So keep those top five cards on the top five positions you know so only shuffle the bottom few cards and then put them back on the bottom. To create the illusion that the spectator is going to shuffle every pile. You're going to do this little move. Um, I think it was created by Benjamin Earl. It's called a little packet switch. The spectator is going to be handing you the middle pile back when they're done shuffling it, right? And you're going to appear to basically swap the piles. So say, so we're going to exchange piles and now you can shuffle that one. In reality, you really did not do anything. You still have the same top pile and they still have the same middle pile. But this move um, creates the illusion that you're sort of exchanging the piles. So all that happens is you're going to hold your pile with your fingertips here on the far right side of the pile, just like this. And then what you're going to do is you're going to use your fingers over here to grab the spectator's pile with your hands, just like this. And you're going to pick it up like this, okay? So it looks something like this in this position. All you're going to be doing is just taking the top pile um, which is your pile, you're just going to be taking it back and then handing this back to them. And at full speed, it really just looks like you're switching the piles around, right? And with misdirection, they will really not notice this at all. So basically at full speed, the trick would look like, so here, you take the middle pile, they shuffle it, um, and then you would shuffle the bottom few cards of this pile. Um, just put everything back on top and then say, so okay, we can actually switch the pile so you can go ahead and shuffle it up some more, but in reality, you're still holding onto the same pile. And as they're shuffling this one, you shuffle this one more time, um, keep everything in order, put this back. They're still shuffling this. So as they're shuffling this, put this one down and pick up the bottom pile. And you can do some false shuffles, just keep this bottom card on the bottom here. All right, so you can do this little retention shuffle, just uh, keep that card on the bottom. And then you're gonna do the exact same packet switch. So you're gonna pick up the pile and then say here, so we can actually switch it one more time. And then you just do the exact same switch. So then you can shuffle this pile like one more time and then just set it down on the table right next to where it was before. And then the spectator can hand you the middle pile back and then you can just place it back in the middle. So in the spectator's mind, they've actually had a chance to shuffle every single one of the piles, but in reality, they've just been shuffling this middle pile the entire time. What you're going to explain to the spectator now is you're going to be explaining like dealing and stopping process. So you're actually going to be setting up the deck as you do this. So you're going to pick up the uh, the topmost pile or the pile to the your left containing your top five cards that you need to be in order here. You're going to be dealing the top four cards and then stopping. So you're going to say, so basically, I'm going to be dealing cards one at a time, and whenever you want, you can call out stop. And as you can see, I've just dealt the top four cards on the table. And then what you're going to do is say, so then when you say stop, I'm going to take my prediction card, put it in the middle, and then I'm going to drop the rest of the pile on top. And you're going to do exactly what I just said. So you're just going to do everything. At this point, you're going to take out the jack, just remove it, and then put it back. And now you're going to say, so now we'll do it for real. That was just like a demonstration. And now you've actually just set up this pile so that the two here is on the bottom. And that's just exactly what you want. And the jack is also on top. So you just set up this pile here and the ace is still on the bottom there. So once you have those cards in position, you're ready to go. So at this point, the spectator can decide which one they want to start with. Let's say they actually want to start with the jack this time. So you deal out the cards normally. They say stop wherever they want. You're going to place the card in and then drop the cards on top, just as you said you were going to do. There's no sneaky moves in this part. Let's say they want to do the two next, deal out the cards normally, just like this. They say stop, you put the card in, and then you square it up, just like that. And then you're going to deal out the cards again. They can say stop wherever they want. Let's say stop there. And I like to do this little thing. I didn't do it in the performance, but I like to say, you're sure, right here. You don't want one more, one less. Um, and at this point, if they want to do like one less, you they say, okay, one less. And I say, all right, perfect, it's your decision. Um, and then you can really give them the sense of like they have ultimate control over these decisions. So at this point, um, once the predictions have been placed here in the middle of the piles, what you're going to do is just stack the cards up from right to left. So basically how I like to remember this is I like to remember that this pile was on the top, and this pile was on the bottom. So I'm basically just sort of reversing that. So I'm putting this now on the top 
and then I'm going to put all of that on the top. So I put this here on top, and then all of this on the top, just like this. So I'm basically just sort of reversing what I had before. What you're going to do is you're going to spread out the cards from the top of the deck, and you're going to be seeing here the last prediction face up. You're going to thumb it off on the table and put it back in the position where it was before. And then all these cards above that prediction, you'll see that the ace is over here. So what you're going to do is you're going to tap the cards on the deck and then place this pile right next to the ace. What you're going to do is you're going to be talking this whole time, and then you're going to pause in the middle after you do this first pile here. You're going to pause and say, okay, wait, what were the predictions again? And you're going to spread to the bottom prediction. So you're not going to go to the next one here, the two diamonds. You're going to skip that one. First, you're going to do this one here, the jack of spades. So you're going to say, all right, wait, what were the predictions again? Oh yeah, the jack of spades. You're going to thumb it off. And uh, remember how we took all the cards above it and put it next to the jack? This time we're going to take all the cards below because there's the jack of clubs right there. So you're going to square up the cards, put these cards here because that's where the soulmate is. So put that there. And then you're going to do the same th exact thing that you just did with this one with this prediction here. And then you're going to say, oh, we, oh yeah, we have the jack of spades, two of diamonds, drop that card take all the cards below this card, because that's where the soulmate is, uh, tap the cards again, and then just drop these cards over here. So we have the Jack of Spades, two of Diamonds, Ace of Clubs. All right, perfect. And that's what you would say. And then at this point, you would just recap, say, yeah, I dealt out the cards. You said stop wherever you wanted. You shuffled every single pile. And then I like to just sort of just spread out these last few remaining cards just to show that the rest of the deck really is completely shuffled. And then I can just set these aside. And at this point, I'm going to just reveal the cards. And all of the soulmates are going to be on the bottom of the pile. So remember to flip over the piles. Don't flip over the top card because they're not on the top. They're actually on the bottom. So every single soulmate is going to be on the bottom. And that is essentially the entire trick. So you can do this trick with a completely borrowed shuffle deck of cards. Just make sure you have 52 cards in the deck. But I'm going to go through this one more time because there is a possibility that something could go wrong right in the beginning. So let's say the cards are shuffled, okay? So let's say the cards are mixed up at this point, and now you're going to begin by pulling out um, those five predictions. So I remember my first one is going to be the fifth card, right? So I'm going to go through the fifth card, and I'm going to see here, okay, jack of spades. So I'm going to go through, pull out, the other jack. Okay, perfect. Now I'm going to go with the top card. Four of hearts. Oh, okay. Wait, the soulmate's right next to it. Um, I would pull it out, but then my jack of spades would be in the wrong position because I'm actually removing a card from the top five cards. This is a problem that could arise. And how to fix it is basically if you see that you have soulmates in the top five cards, just give the deck a cut and then hopefully you should have it so that the top five cards are all different. So basically, if you ever see cards that are matching within the top five cards, just give the deck a quick cut and then just recheck and see if there are any matching cards. So in this case, I would be fine. So that's just one little thing to remember. But other than that, you can do this trick with a completely borrowed shuffle deck of cards, completely impromptu. And I just absolutely love this trick because it completely fools the spectators. So anyways, guys, that's the entire trick. I really hope you guys enjoyed this one. So see you guys for my next video. Bye.